Hello everyone and welcome back. We have been dealing with solved problems on lexical analyzer since the last session. Today we will continue the same. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of the session, today we will observe two more solved problems on lexical analyzer. Consider this question. In a compiler, keywords of a language are recognized during so, we are to find out during which phase keywords are recognized. Before getting to the options, let me remind you that keywords are actually tokens. Coming to the first option, parsing of the program, well, parsing is done in the syntax analysis phase, and there the inputs are the tokens. So, keyword being a token should be recognized before that. Next option is the code generation. Optimized code is taken as input in that phase and as an output, assembly language code should be generated. So, keywords have to be recognized way before that. Option C, the lexical analysis of the program is actually the phase where the keywords are recognized. If you remember, during the session Introduction to Lexical Analyzer, we observed how the DFA helped us to recognize the keyword if. So, this is the correct choice. Now, data flow analysis is performed during code optimization on the program flow graph. So, it is never going to recognize the tokens. Rather, it analyzes the flow control of the program. We will learn about this in details in that code optimization chapter. Let's now move on to the next one. Consider this question, a lexical analyzer uses the following patterns to recognize three tokens T1, T2 and T3 over the alphabets A, B and C. So these are T1, T2 and T3. These are actually regular expressions but they are represented in a different style. Worry not, we will understand it. See, we have been provided with some notes to decode it. Note that X followed by question mark means zero or one occurrence of the symbol X. Note also that the analyzer outputs the token that matches the longest possible prefix. Well, we will understand this part later. Now, if the string BBAACABC is processed by the analyzer, which one of the following is the sequence of the tokens it outputs? And these are the options given. Now allow me to first simplify these modified regexes for you. Remember, X followed by question mark means zero or one occurrence of the symbol X. Following this convention, T1, T2 and T3 becomes actually this. Let me explain. In T1, a question mark means this regex portion may not follow any A symbol that is zero occurrence or it may follow one A symbol that is one occurrence. So T1 is actually B or C whole star. This is the clean star closure which means this can generate either nothing or any number of Bs and Cs in any sequence. And that sequence will be followed by a single A symbol. Or A followed by none or any number of Bs and Cs followed by a single A. Similarly, for T2, none or any number of As or Cs is followed by a single B. Or B followed by none or any number of As or Cs followed by a single B. For T3, B or A clean star closure followed by C or C followed by none or any number of Bs or As followed by a single C. This one signifies zero occurrence of C as a prefix of the regex portion and this one on the other hand signifies one occurrence of C as a prefix to the same regex portion. Now what we will do? We will observe which one of these token sequences can represent this string BBAACABC. Thereafter, we will deal with the later part. Let's consider option A T1, 
T1, T2, T3. Let's take a look at T1 first. The string begins with B. Now from T1, if we consider this regex portion, we can represent BBA of this string using T1. Why so? Because from this B or C whole star, we can derive two Bs and no Cs followed by a single A. Coming to T2, the remaining portion of the string begins with A. So, if we consider this regex portion, we can represent ACA B using T2. How? Because A or C whole star can help us achieve ACA and this B will generate the B following ACA. Now, consider T3. In the string, only the symbol C is left. Now, if we select this regex portion, we will end up having at least two Cs. That's why we are going to choose this one instead. So, if B or C whole star derives nothing, we can still have this C. So, T3 can represent C. So, using T1, T2, T3, we can represent the string. Now, option B is T1, T1, T3. Let's observe the string for that. Considering T1, using this regex portion of T1, we can represent BBA like the last one. Now, we again have T1 and the remaining portion of the string begins with A. Now, if we use this regex portion, it will help us achieve ACA. That is, A followed by a C generated from B or C whole star followed by A. Consider T3. We have only BC left in the string. If we select this portion from B or A whole star, we can derive B only and the following C will give us BC. So, using option B, that is T1, T1, T3, we can also represent the string. Now, next in line is T2, T1, T3. Let's consider that. Observe the string again. It's got two Bs at the beginning. Now, in case of T2, using this portion, we can generate BB because B followed by nothing, which is generated by this A or C whole star, followed by B will give us two Bs. Coming to T1, the string now has two A's in the beginning of its remaining portion. And from this regex portion of T1, we can generate two A's. That is, A followed by nothing from this B or C whole star, followed by A. Now, the next one is T3. Observe the remaining portion of the string. It is having C, A, B, C, which can be generated from this regex portion of T3, right? So, using option C, we also can represent this string. Now, option D says T3, T3. Let's observe the string for that one as well. If we consider first T3, Observe the string, it is beginning with B, so clearly this regex portion will represent BBAAC, that is, two consecutive Bs followed by two consecutive As will be generated by this B or A whole star, and this C will generate the C at the end of that. Coming to the next T3, if we observe the remaining portion of the string, we have ABC. This can also be generated from this regex portion of T3 only. B or A whole star will help us represent AB and the C will represent the C at the end of the string. So, using T3, T3, we can also represent the string. So, basically, all these sequences can represent the string. Let's have their representations. Now, focus on the second note. It says, the analyzer outputs the token that matches the longest possible prefix. So, in case of option A and B, the prefixes have three characters. In case of C, 
the prefix has only two characters. Only in case of D, the prefix has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that is 5 characters. So yes, this is the token the lecture will produce as output. So for this question, option D is the only correct choice. So in this session, we have solved two more problems on lexical analyzer. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe various errors and their recovery in terms of lexical analysis. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.